Here is a new Democrat candidate for governor, and he joins us now here in our studios. He is businessman Jeff Green. Thank you so much for joining us. We're glad Thank to you for having you. me. Thank you. And the AP is reporting that you have said you're willing to spend pretty much whatever it takes, as much as $200 million of your own fortune in order to win this race. First of all, uh, are you talking just about the primary or about the general election? And if you're so gung-ho, why would you wait so long to get in the race? Well, that's a, that's, that's a long question, so I'll address it one at a time. I mean, of, of course, the, when I, I hope I don't have to, spend, have to spend $200 million, but whatever it takes to get the message out in Florida, that Democratic message I'm going to spend. I mean, most people don't really know much about me, but, you know, my background is I wasn't always a billionaire. When I started out as a middle-class kid in Worcester, Massachusetts, and then um, my dad had a textile machinery business, and when the mills all moved south, he lost everything, and my parents moved to West Palm Beach, and, you know, we had been a very comfortable middle-class family, and then all before I knew it, I got to I was in West Palm Beach. My parents went from living in a beautiful home with a backyard to a small two-bedroom apartment. My dad went from a proud business owner to driving a van in a vending route, hard work, carrying heavy cakes of soft drink. My mom became a waitress at the Breakers. I remember seeing her come home from work exhausted at midnight from in her uniform. And I saw how our family's faith had changed. You know, it was frightening, and, and I it, it's really put me in touch with what people in mm -hmm. Florida go through all the time and we'll go through a lot more as we get more and more job dis displacement in the technology economy. So, you know, my, I, I grew up in Massachusetts in the shadow of the Kennedys. I was always raised to think that the most noble thing you could do is to, to make other people's lives better. And I've been blessed with enormous financial success. And uh, I've always wanted to do, be involved in public service. Uh, Florida has a lot of problems. I mean, what the Republicans have done in the last 20 years, in my view, is destroyed the state in so many ways. And this race has been uh, going on for a while, but I decided uh, that really what, what, what we are in the Democratic primaries, you know, we're sitting here two and a half months from the election, and the leading candidate is undecided because none of the existing candidates have really inspired the electorate. Hmm. And, uh, and I don't think any of the, the, the candidates have the funds or will be able to raise the funds to beat the Republican if, even if they were, had been able to inspire the electorate. So guns are a big issue right now. This uh, is the two-year anniversary of yeah. the Pulse uh, mass shooting. Yeah, my uh, heart goes out to that family. I, and I have three young sons, four, six, and eight years old. So when I hear about a tragedy like this thing, it's just, you know, it, it, it's, 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 it's horrible. Terrible. It's horrible, horrible. And Parkland, of course, is here in our, in our backyard yeah, yeah, also. Yeah. Um, but the legislature is controlled by Republicans. What do you think you could actually get done when it comes to, to gun reform, working well, with the Republicans? Well, I mean, look, I think you, you, have to, you have to be able to persuade people of what you want to get done. I mean, in, in everything, it's not just in guns. I mean, if I'm, if I'm elected governor, I'm going to be focused on a lot of issues. Education's another issue we want to talk about. I mean, when my parents moved here in 1970, I remember I was in junior here in high school, and I was thinking, I don't, I, I think, I don't know if I want to move to Florida because the schools are so much worse than they are in Massachusetts. That was 48 years ago. Guess what's happened in the last with 20 years of Republican governors? We're 40 in the country, K to 12 education, 40. If I get elected governor, I guess I can't do much worse. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm th so so so. How am I going to get more funds to have pre-K for a? Uh, you know, for all kids and as in three and four year olds. Yeah, where does years. that come from? We're gonna we're gonna get it out of the budget, and that's gonna the same question you asked me about guns. I'm gonna have to be the kind of governor that persuades these, you know, with, with a, whatever it takes, persuades the, the the members of the House and the Senate to go along with what's important. I mean, we you know we we, we are ruining our kids' lives in the state of Florida. You know that? I mean, you know that in part of third grade, children learn to read. After third grade, people kids were you know they read they read to learn, and in the third grade in Florida, the 54% of third graders are at third grade reading level. 54 means 46% mm. of those kids are not going to be able to read to learn. And, mm. you know, you'd think, well, gee, maybe it's just the third grade. Check the statistics. All the way through high school, this, it's still in the 50s. So we have to get, we have to do, we have to address education in a very big way. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fight as governor of Florida to get it to, to make, it will be top five within 15 years. So where does the money come from? Because it's always tight and, uh, you know, of course, you have been very philanthropic with your own personal fortune. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are a lot of very, very wealthy people who say, you know what, I don't pay enough in taxes. I would be willing to pay more in order to help out common causes like education. Is that an answer? Are you considering, would you consider raising taxes? 
Well, look, no, nobody wants to hear that you're going to raise taxes, but I can tell you that people like me, who have been the huge beneficiaries of, of, of what we of this this recovery we've had, which has been a recovery for the rich. I mean, let's face it. I mean, wages have not gone up for ordinary Floridians, but, but asset values because of zero interest rates and the inability of any the Washington to get any fiscal policy passed the last uh, these last years have enriched very wealthy people. And, and like Warren Buffett says, and I'm in the Giving Pledge with my wife, and I agree with him. The very wealthy people should pay a bigger share of taxes, and, and it's needed because you know ultimately, we can't. We're ruining these kids' lives. We're not giving them the basic tools they need to succeed. So education is one thing. Healthcare. We have a lot of issues to address. Criminal justice reform. I'm. I'm. I, I've spent a lot of time on a, on a number of these issues, and I know we have a limited amount of time here to discuss them. Mm, so unfortunately. But, but we'd love to have you come back and talk about this more. And, and of course, we have the primary uh, uh, contest, which is go taking place in August. And so you are fighting against some of the other, some of your fellow Democrats, trying to separate yourself from the pack. Yeah. And we'll be watching very closely to see how you do yeah, that. Yeah, just to, just to respond to that first question you raised. I mean, yeah. you know, in the last election, Charlie Chris spent fifty million dollars. Rick spot, caught, spent one hundred and twenty million. When we lost, see that last story, you can see why, where he got the money from, and it's all dawning on me now. This guy may not have been getting money personally, but he's been raising money for all these elections at the expense of Florida taxpayers by paying ten times as much to clear gutters. But you know, it's going to take a lot of money to get a message out, a democratic message out. Uh, we've been outspent two to three to one. I will spend whatever it takes to make sure there's a Democrat in the governor's mansion in Tallahassee. January of 2019. All right, Jeff Green, we appreciate you being here today. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much, much for, for joining us. Thank you for having us. me. I appreciate nice it. to meet you, sir.